As far as technology is concerned, size matters. The race to create ever smaller microchips leading to miniaturized devices has forced some scientists to completely rethink their definition of small. While lots of scientists like to solve big problems by conducting big experiments, two research groups here in Switzerland are working on a much smaller scale. In fact, many of their experiments can be conducted on the head of a pin. Computer giant IBM and noted Swiss University ETH in Zurich are at the forefront of developing nanotechnology. From tiny robots to new forms of computing, these scientists are working on devices which in some cases are thousands of times smaller than existing microtechnology. Some of the devices we're building they vary in size. The largest are, are a little bit less than a millimeter long. Um, one of the dimensions we're shooting for is to make sure that these would fit inside of a needle that's around 300 microns or so, a third of a millimeter. Ensuring these devices fit inside the head of a needle is important because work is already underway to find specific medical applications for nanorobots. These tiny machines could actually be injected into the body and directed to specific organs, which would otherwise require complex and sometimes invasive surgery. One of the applications we've been working on recently has been in retinal surgery and developing uh, devices that could actually uh, deliver drugs and make measurements at the uh, vitreous retinal interface at the back of your eye. Working at these tiny dimensions creates a host of technical challenges. For instance, all machines require some form of power supply. Nano batteries aren't exactly off-the-shelf components, so these machines are powered and controlled by a clever use of magnets. Here we can just about see a tiny robot, less than a millimeter in size, scuttling around underneath a microscope. It's being controlled using this method. But the physical laws as we understand them have new and different meaning in a world which is so minute it can only be viewed under an electron microscope. For example, the way things swim at these scales, um, if you took yourself and you shrunk yourself by about 10,000 times and you tried to swim, Water would feel uh, thicker than molasses, and you would go nowhere. And you have to develop motions like the corkscrew that bacteria flagella have evolved, uh, which is that, that kind of design is what we use to move through these fluids. That theory is demonstrated here by these robots, which could also have medical applications. They swim in exactly the same way as this example of real E. coli bacteria. IBM's researchers are using nanotech to create processes which could be as revolutionary to computing as the microchip. This is an example of nanoprinting, using gold particles to create an image so small it would just about fit on the tip of a human hair. It's probably only really useful as an exhibit in the world's smallest art gallery, but it does demonstrate technology which could be applied to the next generation of computers. With the even smaller particles, with the gold nanoparticles, those are catalytic particles if they are on a silicon surface. And you can grow silicon nanowires from these surfaces, and then uh, these nanowires are first seen, for example, as future um, building blocks of, of new chip architectures. And here is a semiconducting nanowire actually growing. It's about a tenth of the diameter of a human hair and it could be the first step in creating new sorts of greener computer chips. Their tiny size requiring much less power. Our research will lead to faster computers, to computers with lower power consumption, which um, outperforms uh, today's computer by far. Microtechnology has had a profound effect on the world around us. However, microscopic nanotechnology could have an even bigger impact on computing, healthcare, and a whole host of other industries and activities. In this case, small really is beautiful. <laughs>